Hi everyone, this is Ariane Reed, and this is my seventh month on tea. So this month there's been some new changes and also just a progression of some things that were previously going on. So the first thing I want to go over is hair changes. This month I have received some more hair down on my thighs, down the inside of my thighs, a little bit down the back of my thighs. I'm starting to really notice some hair on the back of my thighs now. I never really had hair there, so that's kind of new for me. I am also getting some hair on the backs of my calves as well, and I'm getting a little bit more on my stomach, just, just a little bit, not, not really much worth mentioning. Nothing on my chest yet, uh, thankfully, and unfortunately nothing through here, and my mustache still isn't doing anything. I haven't shaved it in a couple weeks and you, you still can't see it. It only really needs to be shaved like once every two or three weeks. It's so weak and it comes in so slowly. But since that's all I've got, I'm just gonna keep shaving it because I'm not a mustache only person. Like I, I would do a mustache if I was gonna do like all the stuff, but since I don't have all the stuff, we'll just keep waiting on that one. Voice, I have been experiencing a slight fluctuation in my voice. It seems like it kind of goes up and down. Like it, one from one month to the next, it will it'll change just a little bit. It'll be a little higher, and then it'll be like a little bit lower, and a little bit higher, and a little bit lower. So it kind of does its own thing. I have noticed that it does seem raspier. It does seem a bit more like a smoker's voice kind of. <laughs> Um, but not that I smoke, but like it, it just sounds like that. Like it's, it's kind of, it's a little bit raspier, just a little bit, a little gravelier, a little, not quite as manly as I would like it to be, unfortunately, but maybe someday, maybe it's getting there. The other thing is it also has been doing a lot of breaking. There's been a lot of times where I try to talk to someone and it will decide that I don't need the first syllable that of what I'm about to say. It will decide that I suddenly only need the rest of the first word of that sentence. And that word will, the rest of the word will pop right out, but the first syllable does not make it out of my mouth. And I, that's really all I have to say about my voice. Uh, passing is something I want to go over because it's something that I'm now doing full time and I'm really excited about that. I don't pass on the phone, however. I don't know if it's just my voice or if it's my name or a combination, but for some reason, customer service reps around the world, I was calling various states, and they all gendered me as female. They all kept calling me ma'am. So that's my only not passing experience. But otherwise, in person, I seem to be passing really well, which is awesome, but also weird too. Let me. Let me say that. Um, passing is kind of weird. People do treat men differently. And it's also weird just not being stared at so much anymore, not being suspiciously eyed while I'm speaking to someone. Men at the gym are now chatting me up and starting to have conversations with me and kind of accepting me like into their social circle. And the only bummer is that I, that I had to look like a man in order to be accepted like that. Like I, it kind of bums me out that people feel like they need to assign a binary gender to us and figure out our gender before they can be nice to us and just treat us like human beings. But I don't necessarily blame those people. I blame society in general for, for being that way, for, for people not having that kind of education and awareness, you know, so I, I blame schools and um, you know, especially like K through 12 type schools and stuff where they're required to be LGBTQ inclusive with their curricula now throughout California. But unfortunately, a lot of them are not obeying that new law and are kind of disregarding it. And I just feel like they're kind of ignoring us and not teaching kids about us. And so I think that's part of the reason why so many adults are now coming out of these public schools and treating us crappy and, and not realizing that they don't need to assign a gender to us to be nice to us, like treat us with kindness, respect, and civility. And I, I blame education and society for, for doing that um, to society, for doing that to people. Um, but anyway, um, 
So that, so passing has been great. Passing is something I've been doing full time. I'm really excited about that. The other thing I want to go over is my mental state. So I've been fairly mentally stable. I, I, I'm in my late twenties, so I've been that way for a while now. But unfortunately this month I did have one moment of suicide ideation. I just, I had a lot going on and just a lot of ne negative experiences. And I feel like since I started tea, I feel like men have more of, um, like we, we tend to have more of a fight or flight kind of reaction to things. We don't ease in and out of things so much. We kind of, bam, like, I don't really know how to describe it. Like as a female, before I started tea, when I was really upset, what would happen is I would ease down into like this horribly negative pit and then eventually ease back out of it. Now it's more like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh crap, I'm not. And then I go to that horrible place and I come right back out and then I'm fine again. It's really kind of weird and it's, it's very, it's much more like abrupt. It's much more uh, like it's powerful, it hits you and then it lets you go. Um, and life only gets easier, let me say that. As, as transition moves along, as people treat me better in society, things do get easier. But it's still a challenge, you know. There's a lot of transphobia out there. There's a lot of lack of awareness out there. There's a lot to um, really challenge us. And, and you know, there's a lot that we could decide to be negative about if we want to focus on it. But I'm doing my best to not focus on it. And to just be happy. Because the thing is, my favorite author... Jacqueline Carey once said that happiness is the highest form of wisdom. See, our happiness is something that we have the power to create and to decide whether to be happy or not be happy. And I know it probably sounds um, cheap coming from someone who is older, someone who is white. You know, I've got white privilege. I and not dependent on parents for my my house, my income, things like that. You know, I'm very independent, but I do have my challenges. You know, while I do have a supportive family, I have, you know, like childhood friends who I've been like best friends with since I was a little kid who no longer speak to me or respond to me or anything. Um, you know, I've got coworkers who like don't want to be around me and things like that. I just got like a lot of different things going on. And you know, it's not like it's been, I, I do have privilege, but it's not exactly like I, I have it totally easy either. Um, I'm kind of in between somewhere. Um, but I, I do have some very wonderfully supportive family members and friends and life. It, you know, there, there is a lot for me to also appreciate as well. And so I just wanted to say that, um, that while there is a lot of challenges going on when you're, when you are trans and the people around you are being transphobic, um, your happiness should not be dependent on how other people treat you, how they look at you, what they think about you. Your happiness, it shouldn't, shouldn't depend on, um, addiction to anything or, um, it really shouldn't depend on anyone or anything except you. You have the power to just be happy. I, I feel every time I go to those negative places, I try to remind myself that things could be so much worse. You know, I could be right now, sure, um, things could be better, but no one's raping me right now. No one's trying to kill me. I'm not being stabbed to death. I'm not bleeding out. I'm not starving to death. Nothing really crazy is happening to me right now. And that is a huge blessing in and of itself. You know, life could always be so much worse than it is at every moment of your life. And I don't, I'm sorry if that sounds like a negative outlook, but that's what I use to remind myself to stop being, stop being hung up on little things and to just enjoy the moment and to just enjoy that I am here. I am alive. I might not look quite the way I want to yet. I might not sound quite the way I want to yet. I might have a lot of progress to make. I might have a lot of challenges to overcome, but life only gets easier and only gets better. And there's so much out there, um, waiting for you to just to become a part of it and to really go out there and make a difference in the world and do your thing and be you and just rock you. So I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I, I understand that we all have lots of struggles that we're going through and 
you know, various things that we're dealing with um, in our personal lives and our relationships and, and our, you know, we're all trying to, um, you know, we all have to work full time and, you know, put food on the table or, you know, whatever it is you got going on. Like we've all got stuff going on and, and life is just difficult in every direction um, because society is just unfortunately very, um, in a lot of places, very transphobic and just not ready for um, to easily embrace and love people like us. But that's not our fault. And we just need to push through it and just remind ourselves of all the reasons why we are happy, why life is good, why it could be worse because all these awful things that could be happening to us are not. Um, we need to remember what to be grateful for and to appreciate um, and to not get hung up on the little things and stop appreciating what we do have. So I just want to say that. And I hope this helps some of you. Um, one thing I do want to go over um, to get out of that seriousness and get into something a little bit lighter. Um, I want to go over the fact that menstruation has recently stopped. I I don't want to mention this in my last video because I don't want to go over it too soon and then have it attack me the next day and you know that would be just that would be just my luck that I jinx it and then you know I, I get my menstruation the very, very next day. So what I do want to mention is that I haven't menstruated since 2019. Um, actually the day of my birthday, my 20th birthday. Yay me! <laughs> um, and so it's been about 80 days now, and so I think it might be done because my cycles typically don't last more, don't last that long. My usual cycle would be like 24 to 26 days, but the occasional cycle that's 40 days or 75 days, something like that, especially since I started tea. But I believe now I feel like it's done. I do want to mention that right before I got that last period, I did get nauseous. I am someone who's prone to dysmenorrhea where I get extremely nauseous, um, extreme pain. I live in pain. I have scoliosis. Um, it's an invisible disability where your spine is all twisted up and it's only going to get worse. And my pain, I've been living with pain every day since I was 16, um, which is probably part of the reason why I'm so happy because I, you know, I've already been overcoming a challenge every day. So overcoming challenges just kind of comes second nature to me. But I want to mention that I do have dysmenorrhea. And so maybe that's what was going on. Um, but I just want to mention that the day before I got my last period, I did get really nauseous for a good hour or two. I couldn't eat or anything. I had to like go home. Well, I wasn't home. I was, uh, so I had to go back to my hotel and lie down for a bit. Um, and then I got that again a month later. Well, a month ago from right now, which would have been around day 45. So around the time that I was expecting to get another menstruation, I instead just got a little bit nauseous. I had uterine cramps for a couple weeks and not like the really bad, like awful kind, but just, just feeling kind of crampy in general and, and didn't really notice it until I would like, you know, it was, it was a kind of pain I could just ignore until I would have some chocolate or something with sugar, which acerbates inflammation. And once I would have that sugar within an hour or so, I'd start feeling some pangs, uh, some aches going on down there. And then for about an hour or so, and then it would ease away. Uh, it was not anything that was really terrible. It's just really annoying. So for a good few weeks there, uh, until like a week or two ago, I think I stopped, I stopped noticing cramps so much. But for a good two or three weeks I was having them. So that was, that was kind of annoying, but I think it's done. Um, I do occasionally get some cramps, especially when, um, I'm at the gym. I'm just like really pumping that iron and to the point where like, I feel like I am dying. That is when I will sometimes get cramps. So like, like your year suddenly decides to remind you that it exists. <laughs> um, I think that is it. I think that's all I have to go over this month. So like I said, not very much has happened, but you know, we'll see what happens next month. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for supporting me and for being here for me and for just being a good human being and so for supporting each other. So thank you so much and I will talk to you all next month. Hi everyone, um, my name is Arian. This is my first week on tea. Hi everyone, this is Ariane Reed, and this is my seventh month on tea. This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice.
This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice. This is my talking voice.